I created every single classic cocktail and then I ranked them in a tier list. Are people still making tier lists? I'm not sure, but I really wanted to make one. Okay, 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 you got me. This isn't every single classic cocktail, but I selected some of the most popular, most famous ones out there because after all, this is a YouTube video. You know, I can't be like three hours long. So how is this going to work? I made a bunch of different cocktails and then I have my tier list here. It goes from S all the way to D. D being the worst, S being like God level, like the highest level possible, and the higher up, the better I think they are, and so forth. All right, let's get into the first cocktail. First up, the old fashioned. One sugar cube right into our mixing glass. We are gonna do two dashes of Angostura bitters. We're gonna do some two dashes of orange bitters. We're going to muddle this up a little bit. We'll do two ounces of bourbon. Fill this up with ice. And we're gonna stir it till it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Grab a large cube, and we're going to pour this out over the top. And then we're going to express one orange peel over the top. And this is just a personal thing. You don't have to do this. I just like to do it. I also like to express a lemon peel into my old fashions as well. I'm weird. Leave me alone. All right. Amazing. You can't really talk about classic cocktails without talking about the old fashioned. And genuinely, this one's the easiest one to rank. We're gonna put this one at S tier. It is one of the most amazing cocktails out there. It is one of the best formats for so many different variations that you can make. All right, let's move on to the next one. And all right, moving from one of the most beloved and classic, most well-known cocktails to one that's a little bit more obscure, but definitely a pre-prohibition classic. Uh, and then it divides a lot of opinion, the aviation. We are going to do two ounces of a lemon dry style gin. I'm using this Brazilian gin uh, that I picked up when I was in Brazil about a month and a half ago. It is a lemon dry style. Use whatever lemon dry style you would like. We're going to do a quarter of an ounce of creme de violette. Uh, original recipe calls for creme vet. Violet, similar thing. Uh, I like to use the violet and it has a nice little color. A half ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. This is going to be featured in a lot of these cocktails. We're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And in some of the Asian recipes, you're not gonna see the simple syrup. I do think that it does need a little bit of sweetness or else it gets very unbalanced. So we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. Add some ice and lock it up and shake it up. All right, we're gonna grab a nice chilled and we're going to double strain this cocktail right in. And for the garnish, we're gonna do one brandy, or as I like to call them, slutty cherries. And there you have the aviation. A lot of people despise this cocktail, quite frankly, and I never understood the hate. I actually really enjoy this cocktail when it's well done. I actually think that there's a modern classic that riffed on this way better called the Water Lily. Uh, but if I had to rank this one, I think I would probably put it at, I'm torn between B and C, but I'm gonna have to go with, it's, it's, it's probably a C tier cocktail. But all right, let's move on to the next one. All right, let's keep this moving to another uh, simple one. This is the ever classic daiquiri. So we are going to do two ounces of a good white rum. I'm using Privateers, which is uh, made right here in Massachusetts. Two ounce, an ounce of a freshly squeezed lime juice. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Add some ice, lock it up. Grab our chilled coop and double strand this one out. And then we will garnish with one lime wheel. And, all right. The daiquiri is absolutely amazing. There's, I have very few words about it. I'm sure you've all had daiquiris. When well made, there's very few cocktails that I personally find better. This is simply an S tier. Next up is the mint julep, one of the most classic American cocktails there is. Uh, it is synonymous with the American South and the Kentucky Derby, uh, and it is just very simple and very delicious. We are first going to do about 10 to 12 mint leaves. You don't want to skimp out. You really want this to get that good minty flavor. So we're gonna put quite a bit of mint in there, right? And we're gonna lightly muddle this. We just want to express some of the oils from the mint leaves. All right, and then I like mine a little bit on the more spirit forward side, so we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup right in there. And then I'm going to do 
uh, two ounces of bourbon. All right. So I'm gonna grab some pebble dice, put that in there. We're going to grab our spoon. We're gonna stir it up to incorporate some of these flavors. You can swizzle it if you'd like, or just stir it. Try not to make a mess like I am here. And then fill it up with more pebble dice. And then make a nice little mound. And again, try not to make a giant mess like I am. And then we're gonna wanna make a little hole on the side here in the ice. And garnish with more mint. I'm gonna spank it like the bad girl that it is. Express some of that, that, that smell in the oils there. And then we're gonna just put it right there on the side. And if you have confectioner sugar or like powdered sugar, you can put it over the top and it really, really looks amazing. And then we're gonna grab our straw and put that right in there. Mm, so great, refreshing. You get the bourbon, you get the mint, you get that little bit of sweetness. It is super crushable and great for a little bit of that warm weather. Nice and refreshing with the mint, you get that earthy bourbon. Really, really tasty. I'm gonna give this one an A. All right, moving along to another minty cocktail, the Mojito. Mojito is a super classic Cuban cocktail. It is pre-prohibition. It is one of the most famous things on this planet. Uh, and we're going to grab our shaker. I like to shake my mojitos to really incorporate that flavor. We're gonna do about five mint leaves right in there. We're gonna do two ounces of a good white rum. Again, we're gonna use privateers. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Three quarters simple syrup. Add ice. And then we're gonna do this the way that a lot of places tell you to do it. We're just gonna dirty dump right in there with the bits of mint. Try not to miss the glass. And then of course the final touch is some soda water. Garnish this with some more mint. Spanky poo. And put that right in there. Grab our straw. So while the mojito is not super different than say like a daiquiri, I find that the traditional way to build it where you get these bits of pieces of mint in your teeth Super unsatisfying. So I actually double strain my mojitos when I make them. But in the traditional way that we have here, I'm actually, I think that the mojito is incredibly overrated. I'm going to give it a D. All right, now let's move to a really fun one that is named after an expression from the pre-prohibition times, the bee's knees. Uh, it's a super simple cocktail. And I find that when we make it with a honey gin, like the Bar Hill gin here that is made from honey, it actually adds an even more like really fun element because they use bees to make honey and this is called the bee's knees and this cocktail is definitely the bee's knees. Two ounces of our gin. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice and three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, which is just two parts honey to one part water. Add ice to our shaker, lock it up. And then we're going into there. But while not necessary, I like to express a little bit of a lemon peel over the top and give it a little tail. And there you have a bee's knees. Mm. I love that cocktail so, so much. Super simple, three ingredients. Just, I think that gin, lemon, and honey are just like the perfect combination. This is one of my absolute favorite gin cocktails on the planet, especially because you can pretty much make it wherever you are. It's amazing. Uh, gotta give it an A. Definitely A tier. Let's switch this up and get funky. We are going to make a Pisco Sour, one of the most classic Pisco cocktails on the planet. Pisco is the national spirit of Peru. It is like a brandy made from very specific grapes. And despite the fact that it's the, the official cocktail of uh, Pisco in Peru, it was actually created by an American in a Peruvian bar in the early 1900s. So we are going to do two ounces of an achilado Pisco. This is where it gets kind of funny. The recipe that I like to use is a half ounce of lemon juice and a half ounce of lime juice. And why is that is that the citrus that you find in South America is different than the citrus that we get here in North America. And so uh, when you mix lemon and lime, you actually get closer to what the flavor of the limes uh, in South America tastes like. And so I actually like to mix them both up. And then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. 
one egg white. Whoa, whoa, hey, before you click off this video and go, ew, egg white. First of all, I'm not the one who created this cocktail. And B, if you have never tried a cocktail with egg white, I think you're missing out. It creates this amazing velvety uh, texture to the cocktail. Uh, and I think that it's just, it's just, you gotta give it a shot before you start going, Meh. All right, so we're gonna crack it into the big tin. So just in case we mess up, we don't mess up the cocktail. So all we want is the egg white. And we're gonna roll the yolk back and forth between the two halves of the shell until the egg white comes out and we throw this out. And then we're going to do what is known as a dry shake, meaning we're gonna combine all these ingredients and shake without ice to really froth up that egg and kind of emulsify it so that it's safe to drink. And then we're gonna add ice and do it again. So let's combine these up. All right, and then we're going to add our ice and do it all over again. It really takes a lot out of you to do this. All right, chilled coupe glass. I forgot to chill this one. Don't tell anyone. And just look at that. And then you're gonna to wanna to let that settle for a little bit. And then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, bitters on top to make it nice and nice and delicious and beautiful. And then I actually have some special Peruvian bitters, but if you just have Angostura, that's fine too. Uh, these are the chuncho bitters. They're, you know, people kept telling me when I made this online that I needed to get Peruvian bitters. And I was able to get my hands on some. So we're gonna just do a couple of drops on the top here. And then we're gonna make a nice little design. Mm. It's so good. It's by far one of my favorite cocktails on the planet. To me, the Pisco Sour, it is an S tier. There's very few cocktails that have the combination of flavors that this has. The Peruvian Pisco is very undeniable. It's a very unique flavor. And for whatever reason, when you combine it with all these, these ingredients here, it just really, really shines, especially if you're using an Achilado Pisco. S tier, without a doubt. All right, after a quite complex cocktail, let's go back to a simple one, the Tom Collins. Tom Collins is one of the most iconic gin cocktails out there. Uh, and if you use a really good gin, I'm using St. George's Botanivore. I love the botanicals on this one. It's an incredible cocktail. We're gonna do two ounces of our gin, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Add some ice, lock it up. And then we're going to grab our Collins glass. See, it's such a classic cocktail that we refer to highball glass sometimes as Collins glasses. And then we're gonna add a large cube and over the large cube. And lastly, top with some soda water. I like to garnish with a little lemon wheel with a slutty cherry right in there. Amazing. It's like a gin and sparkling lemonade, and who doesn't love that? It's super crushable, it's super incredible. It's very simple, um, and for that alone, I'm probably gonna give this a B. All right, after shaking so many cocktails, let's make a stirred cocktail. Let's make probably the most famous classic cocktail out there, the martini. And before I start getting the comments, we're gonna make a real martini. We're not gonna make a shaken vodka served with pieces of ice in a, in a martini glass. No, we're again, going to use our uh, St. George's Botanivore. We're gonna do two and a quarter ounces of this gin. We are going to do three quarters of an ounce of a dry vermouth. Two dashes of orange bitters. And I mean, the martini evolved from a cocktail known as the Martinez, and I should have probably made a Martinez in this video. I actually prefer the Martinez over the martini. Um, I find it has a little bit more of a robust flavor, but I've already made that cocktail on this channel, which you can check out right over here. Uh, but you know, not many people know of the Martinez, but everyone knows the martini. So I figured I'd include the martini in this one. Pour this out into our chilled coupe glass. Oop. Try not to get bits of ice in there. Good thing we can fish them out. And now here I am talking about bits of ice and martinis and I do that. And then we're going to express one lemon peel over the top. 
there we have a real classic martini. I'm gonna be honest with you, I think this is a million times better than like a dirty martini or like a shaken vodka martini, but I still find this super mint. I think it's just like, it's, it's fine, it's all right. I think you need to use good ingredients, but even so, I just think it's kinda like, eh. I'd have like one, probably not order another one. Um, maybe this is gonna divide opinion, but this is definitely a D tier cocktail. I think that if you build off of the martini and have other flavors introduced, it's probably, it probably would climb up higher, but definitely a D tier in my opinion. But all right, let's go ahead and make the uh, counterpart to the martini, the Manhattan. This is a super classic whiskey cocktail, and it pretty much follows the same build as a martini. So we are going to do two ounces of Angostura bitters, and now, before I start getting the comments of, well, the Manhattan is supposed to be 212, two ounces of whiskey, one ounce of vermouth, and two dashes of bitters. I make mine a little bit different because I like more of the flavor of the whiskey in my cocktail. Sue me. So we're gonna do two and a quarter ounces of a good rye whiskey. I'm using uh, Rittenhouse Rye, which is one of my favorites. I like using rye whiskey in whiskey cocktails because I think it stands up better. Three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. I'm using Carpano Antica. And then we're gonna add ice and stir it until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. I'm going to pour it out into our chilled cocktail glass. Oh yeah. Of course, we're gonna garnish with a slutty cherry that we're just gonna throw right in there. Bam. And there we have a Manhattan. Very tasty, very classic, pretty timeless. Um, but again, another controversial opinion, I think that what people do with Manhattans and build upon them is actually more interesting than, than the Manhattan itself. I find it kind of boring. It's fine. It's like every time I look at one, I just imagine an old person sitting there. I would like my Manhattan this way. And that's not a dig at old people. I get that. I just think that the cocktail world has evolved. And while it's a great template and a great classic cocktail, it's just, I just, I prefer other things but I prefer it over the martini. So we're gonna put this at a C and not a D. All right, next one we're gonna make is another gin cocktail. It is the Negroni. You might've heard of it. Uh, and you might be thinking to yourself, wow, they really loved gin back in the olden times, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It was pretty much the one spirit that they all drank. It was the most common. And prior to that, it was actually the predecessor to gin, Jennifer, which if you wanna know more about, I have a whole other video that you can check out right over here. It's kinda of like the grandfather of gin. It was all over America for a really long time. All right, the Negroni's super easy. It is three ingredients, all equal parts. You're gonna to wanna to do a London Dry Style gin. So we're gonna do one ounce of our London Dry Style. Oop. One ounce of Campari. Nice bitter. Red ounce of sweet vermouth. Add some ice and stir it until it's nice, filled, and diluted. All right, grab a large, pour it out over the top. Express one orange peel over the top. And there you have the Negroni, super classic. Nice and bitter and delightful. I like Negronis. I find they are a little bitter, um, but they are a mainstay for a reason. People still love this cocktail. It is a very, very good and enjoyable cocktail. And I think that it's, I could have like one, but I'm not gonna have like two or three. I might just have one and stick to that, which, you know, depending on who you are, that might be a positive, but uh, I'm gonna give this one a B. It's a nice B tier, good cocktail. Very dependable. It's like an old bike, you know? I don't know, maybe your bike is broken. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's switch things up and Make a sidecar, which is a super classic cocktail that is made from cognac. We're gonna do two ounces of our cognac. I'm using Golden Watt. If you have Pierre Ferrand, it's a good cognac as well. No Hennessy up in my joint. That's, we're gonna do a half ounce of Cointreau, which is an orange. Uh, you can also use dry curacao, which I quite enjoy as well, but Cointreau is nice and good as well. Three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice and a half ounce of Demerara, which is just the sugar in the raw syrup. Some ice. And then we're gonna grab our coupe glass that we rimmed with sugar. Drain this cocktail right out. And then we're going to express one orange peel over the top. Uh, you wouldn't rim it with it because, you know, it's you're gonna ruin your sugar rim. So 
we're uh, we're gonna just put that right in there. Not right. That to me is by far my favorite cognac cocktail, without a doubt. It is super super nice. It's very classic. Uh, and most people were just like, oh, like, what can I do with like Hennessy? You can make a sidecar with Hennessy if you really want to, but there are better cognacs out there. I'm going to put it in the B category. I use Cointreau and now I'm regretting it. I've always made it with dry curacao. If I had made it with dry curacao, I'd probably put it up to an A, but since I didn't, we'll throw it in B. All right, let's make one of the most classic cocktails on the planet and one that is super, super near and dear to my heart, the Caipirinha. This is Brazil's national cocktail. It is one of the best things Brazil's ever exported. Uh, and it's just, it's amazing. But wait, I wasn't supposed to tell you what I think about it. We'll make it first and then we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll come back. To so we're gonna make it very traditional way. I like to make mine a little bit of a different fashion. So if you wanna check out how I make mine, you can see that video right over here. Uh, but first we're gonna do is about three bar spoons of sugar right into our glass here. We're gonna get a nice little layer of sugar down there. We're going to do about a half of a lime cut up into cubes. I already have them pre-cut because we make these at my bar all day long, every single day. And then we're going to muddle this up to express these oils and get this lime juice out and to really, really incorporate uh, the sugar right in there. This is the most traditional way that caipirinhas are made, uh, even though I think that they should be shaken, but that's that's just me. All right, and once you feel that that's nice and incorporated, about two and a half ounces of cachaça, which is a, it's kind of like rum, but it's made from freshly pressed sugarcane juice rather than molasses. And then we'll do about, that oh, we'll do three ounces, why not? And then we're gonna fill it up with some ice. Let's just stir this up to incorporate it. All right, and there's the caipirinha. As a Brazilian, I would put this in S tier. It's one of my, it's the best seller at my bar. It's one of the most important cocktails uh, of Brazil. It is very important to my identity, but I actually find that the traditional way to make caipirinha is inferior, I know. Me with these, with these very interesting takes on cocktails, I get it, people get very mad at me when I say that. But that being said, the caipirinha, when traditionally made, it's an A tier cocktail. But when you make it the way I do, it's an S tier cocktail. So we're gonna we're gonna put this one in A for now, but just know, if you make it the way I do, it deserves to be in the S tier. And right back to gin. We're gonna make a really influential and important cocktail in the grand scheme of cocktails called the Last Word. This cocktail has been the uh, basis for so many incredible cocktails out there. Um, and I, I, it's very, very important. So it's all equal parts. We're going to do uh, our gin first, London dry style. We're gonna do three, do three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. An ounce of lime juice. And three quarters of an ounce of Luxardo maraschino liqueur. Add. Lock it up. All right. Into a nice antique looking glass and there you have the last word it's iconic it's incredible it's very delicious i love it myself but that being said because it's been the template for so many other amazing cocktails i think that it, it, by history status alone it's more of an out there cocktail it's like the one of the original equal parts cocktails that marries four very distinct flavors in a really really great way i would love to put it in s tier but I think that the Luxardo Maraschino liqueur, unfortunately, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It has a very like, uh, heart, and I don't wanna say harsh, but like an in your face kind of flavor. Um, and while I know that it's kind of part of the original makeup of this cocktail, uh, it's just, I think that there have been other people who have made better variations of this cocktail over time. So I'm only gonna put this in the uh, A tier. I really, really love the last word and it spun off so many incredible, cocktails because of it uh, that I just think it deserves to be in the A tier. We're gonna make a French 75. We're gonna do one ounce of our London Dry Style Gin, a half ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a half ounce of simple syrup, and shake. And we're gonna grab a champagne flute right in there. 
Doesn't look like much, but once we add the other ingredient, you'll see. You're gonna add some, you can add champagne or any sparkling wine, top it up. Not to top it too much or else that's gonna happen. <laughs> and we're gonna express one lemon and throw it right in there. And then we will top it back up to replace the bubbles we lost. And French 75. Tasty. Wow. While the mimosa is the de facto brunch cocktail, I actually think that the French 75 is the superior brunch cocktail. Next time you're at a brunch, order a French 75. Skip the mimosa. This one, it's got to go into... I'm not the biggest fan of champagne or bubbling, sparkling wine, so I'm going to put this one in the B category. Popular cocktails on the planet, the margarita. We're going to do one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're going to do a half ounce of simple syrup. If you want to add agave, go ahead. Just don't comment in the bottom telling me I did it wrong. This is how it was made for many, many years. Do whatever you want. It's your margarita. Half ounce of simple syrup. We're going to do a half ounce of Cointreau. And we're going to do two ounces of a great additive free tequila. I'm using Cimarron. Add some ice. Lock it up. Pour it right out. Garnish with a lime wheel. And we'll give it a sip. Look, I'll tell you this. I don't think you're gonna find anyone who's gonna argue with you that this is an S tier cocktail. There's almost nothing better than a margarita. It's one of the best cocktails on the planet for a reason. And S tier, without a doubt. All right, and a Sazerac. One of the most American and most classic American cocktails ever. So we're going to do about 10 dashes of Pace Shuds bitters. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. This cocktail originated in New Orleans in the early, early cocktail scene of America. And it's just, it is very, very storied. Uh, the original recipe, some people argue that it's a split between cognac and uh, rye whiskey. I really like to use rye whiskey. So we're gonna do two ounces of rye whiskey. And we're gonna fill it up with ice. And we're gonna stir it down until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Low ball glass and I have an atomizer, which is just, it's basically a, a glorified perfume sprayer, which I filled with absinthe. And we're gonna just do a couple of sprays of absinthe right in there. You can also just put a little bit of absinthe in there, coat the glass, toss it out. I like to use the atomizer, it's a little bit quicker in a bar setting. To pour our Sazerac right in there. There's no ice in this cocktail. It is served just like, and lastly, we are going to express one lemon peel over the top. All right. And we're just gonna lay that right over. And there you have the Sazerac. Fuck, that's good. I saved this cocktail for last for a very uh, particular reason. It is by far my favorite cocktail on the planet. Uh, it's super simple. Uh, and as of, out of all of the classic cocktails, this one is one of my, actually I said my favorite, but it's one of my favorites. It is S tier without a doubt. And it's just absolutely amazing. You should definitely, definitely try making this one. Hopefully this video was a fun little watch for you. We went through so many different cocktails. Um, I don't think I've ever made this many cocktails for video in one sitting. Uh, and let me know if you agree with my rankings. And I actually, and actually I included the link to this ranking tier maker down in the description below so that you can rank them yourself. And then, you know, take a screenshot and send it to me. I'd love to see what you think or put it down in the comments below. I know that there's way more classic cocktails that I could have used or made. And I know that there's way more classic cocktails that I could have made for this video, but let me know what you think I missed out on in the comments below. And if you want more cocktail videos after this one, you can check out this one right over here next.